Hey there! Hello and welcome to the technical section of Biopandit. I am sort of your very own Mahapandit and today I am going to talk about estimating residue conservation score at various columns of a multiple alignment. William S. J. Valdar wrote in his 2002 proteins paper that a multiple sequence alignment can be viewed as a historical record. The patterns of amino acid substitutions in its various columns tell us a story of evolutionary pressure, mutation, recombination and genetic drift that often spans millions of years. This is a multiple sequence alignment of the enveloped glycoprotein sequences from different HIV virus strains. Let us think about one column of this multiple alignment, this column. What does this column represent? Well, all HIV strains exhibit the enveloped glycoprotein and this one alignment column represents amino acid variations in a single residue site of this enveloped glycoprotein. Evolutionary history of a protein can be represented as a phylogenetic tree. We are showing you a rooted phylogenetic tree which is drawn with the assumption that evolution is divergent in nature and in some distant past it started from a last common ancestor. Internal nodes represent hypothetical ancestors that are considered to be extinct. External nodes represent taxa, those are living today, for which we have sequences. Divergent evolution is depicted as branches diverging out from the ancestral nodes. These branches represent evolutionary changes. Let us now come back to our problem. One alignment column. Let us think about the evolutionary history of one amino acid site. In this column, we see K, I, T and S. Let me show you how evolutionary substitutions could give rise to this diversity. I have assumed that there was a lysine in the last common ancestors from which different taxa have diverged with different amino acid substitutions. Branches of a phylogenetic tree therefore represent the evolutionary changes between an ancestral node and a daughter node. So you see that in the course of evolution, amino acid sites undergo evolutionary substitutions. But remember that this process is not random. Amino acid substitutions are constrained by functional role of that amino acid site. Let me show you an example, human androgen receptor protein. See the amino acids that constitute the active site of androgen binding. Hydrogen bonding between androgen and three amino acids stabilize this binding. So you can easily understand that at 705 amino acid site, if this arginine is substituted by a negatively charged amino acid that will destabilize this binding because in that case there will be no hydrogen bond. So the protein will be dysfunctional. So in order to maintain the function, there must be a positively charged amino acid at site 705. So basically it means functional constraints restricts the amino acid substitutions in proteins. Let us take an example of histone protein, which is one of the most conserved protein among eukaryotes. Conserved blocks of alignment column are highlighted in grey. You can see that amino acid substitutions can be conservative, those that involve little alteration of the chemical property, and they can be non-conservative, those that involve alteration of chemical properties. Our aim here is to calculate the conservation level of different alignment columns in an alignment. Let us use the alignment of enveloped glycoprotein GP160 that we created in our video on multiple sequence alignment. We shall go to protein variability server. Select protein alignment. Select Shannon, select first sequence as the reference sequence and run analysis. See the result page now. The reference sequence is plotted along the x axis with the estimated Shannon entropy scores being plotted along the y axis. What are these Shannon entropy scores and what do their values signify? You have an alignment column, you have amino acids and gaps, you compute the number of different amino acids in a column. This is your equation for estimating the Shannon entropy scores. 
the concept of Shannon entropy originates from information theory. Simply speaking, if there are many different types of amino acids present in the column, there is a high entropy. In other words, this score is designed in such a way that higher scores signify higher sequence variability. The problem with Shannon entropy is that there is no specific upper limit of a score. If we just normalize these scores within the range 0 to 1, that is much more easily understandable, isn't it? To do this, we go to Scorecones web server. Click on this choose file link and provide your alignment as the input. Select the option that calculate the score for only positions relating to sequence 0. Now select any of these two scoring methods, entropic 21 types or entropic 7 types and see the results. Amino acid variations at each residue site is provided along with a conservation score within the range 0 to 1. See how a simple normalization of Shannon entropy scores does this trick. You have amino acids and gaps. You compute the number of different amino acids in a column and the seven different classes they belong to. Then, this is the conservation score equation in this case. For the 21 types, you consider all 20 amino acids and gaps. For the 7 types, you consider the 7 classes of amino acids. Of course, there are other definitions of conservation scores as well, details of which you can find here. There are no clear definition or instruction about which score is the best one. This choice you must make yourself according to the problem you are addressing. All these scores share a common pattern. They range from 0 to 1, where 1 means 100% conservation. In other words, a conservation score 1 means in that alignment column, there are no evolutionary substitutions. That column or that site is completely conserved.